Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, my name is Morgan, and I haven't uploaded in two weeks, and I've been trying to do weekly uploads for you guys. Uh, for those of you who have been watching the weekly uploads, thank you very much. Um, this doll is extra complicated, so that is why I have not been able to post in two weeks because I've been working on it. Today we are going to be making Madoka from Pula Magi Madoka Magica, specifically Goddess Madoka or Ultimate Madoka, however you prefer to call her. Um, I have both of the figures, well, figmas specifically, of Madoka and Hamura, and I love these outfits so much, so I really want to make dolls of both of them. Yes, um, I want to make them both, and put them as a set, but uh, the Homura video probably won't come for another month or so because these dolls are just so detailed and it takes a lot of my energy <laughs> to make these dolls. So starting off, I'm rerouting an Ever After High doll using some pink nylon doll hair I got from The Doll Planet. I gave this doll several boil washes to lay the hair as flat as I could, and the rooting process for this doll was a nightmare. I had to not only do the middle hairline, but I had to do a back hairline, and on the side, and on the front, because she has these big, voluminous, short pigtails. So I've now reconnected the head to the body, and her hair is super long and beautiful. Instead of cutting and styling her hair right now, I'm just going to wrap it up and start doing the face up. For her face, I really want it to have that soft, angelic look, so starting off with chalk pastels, I'm just dusting on some light pinks. Nothing too harsh, nothing too vibrant, I just want everything to be as soft and natural looking as possible. Now with the first layer done, I move on to my watercolor pencils and sketch out the base shape for the eyes. I wanted this doll to have very large doe eyes to really push the anime aesthetic, but um, that is why I chose an Ever After High doll as a base, not only for the matching skin tone, but because their faces are able to have really large, pretty eyes. I still don't really think I'm amazing at sketching out eyebrows that are even, but this doll is going to have bangs anyway, so we're not even going to worry about it. Once I have my basic sketch down, I add some color. Starting off with the yellow in her irises, I just fill in the entire circle and I'm going to be blending in some shadows later. Since I'm kind of going for an anime look with her eyes this time, the irises are completely different than how I would normally do them. She doesn't necessarily have pupils, there's kind of just this dark ring on the center of her eye. For her bottom lashes, I just take a light brown and I add a couple of them, really light lashes, but for her top lash line, I made them a lot darker. 
and I also did a little different style wise. I usually curl the lashes going to the left or to the right, but this time I just went straight out from the lash line, so it kind of looks like they're kind of coming forward, if that makes any sense. So right now I have all the details laid in place for her face up. I'm just going to go in with a couple extra layers to build up some color. Once I've built up the color, I start going in with some watered down white acrylic paint and painting the sclera. I was debating on going crazy and adding a bunch of catch lights in her eyes, but um, in the anime they don't really have that many catch lights, so I just added one in the corner of her eye and then one at the bottom connecting to her sclera. And with that, her face up is pretty much done. I just added a little bit of some highlighter from my Anastasia Beverly Hills palette. Honestly, right now I think her hairstyle looks super cute and I'm kind of sad that I have to cut a lot of her hair, but um, we'll get through it. Before I move on, I'm going to give her bangs the chop. This part is always so scary because if I cut too much hair, um, I can't really go back and I just take this part really slow, which is why it's time-lapsed for you guys here. Moving on to her outfit and accessories, I'm going to be starting by making her wings. This is actually the wing from her Figma that I have, so I'm going to use that for reference. And I'm trying out something new. I bought some Warbler for this project. Um, I don't really know how to use it, but we're going to figure it out. So I kind of just outlined the shape of the wing by like semi-tracing it but making it bigger because my figma is super tiny so i wanted the wings to be way bigger after i traced out the basic shape i started cutting it out with my scissors and this part was super annoying because even though the wing is a bigger scale it's still pretty tiny So to make the other wing, I just traced the shape again and then cut inside the line so it was around the same size.
So now moving on to her extremely complex outfit, I'm going to start off with the easiest part, which is making her stockings. Um, this is a non-stretch fabric, but it's going to be matching part of the dress, so that's why I'm using it. So they are a little bit bulky, but I just wanted it to be the same color and shine, so that's why I did that. <laughs> now I'm going to paint some Monster High shoes, white as well as her hands, to match Madoka. While the paint is drying, I'm going to start on the dress, which I have made the pattern for myself this time. Very proud. Um, <laughs> I also bought a lot of materials for this one. I have this pink satin fabric, some galaxy fabric, some white satin fabric, and I even bought a rotary cutter with a pinking thing. That is why I needed it. <laughs> so I start off by laying the fabric down, the galaxy fabric, folding it in half, and then I lay down the pink fabric over top of that and then fold that in half because this entire dress is like double-sided fabric. The inside is galaxy and the outside is the satin fabric. So for the first layer, I use my pinking needle to cut out around the shape because if it doesn't line up properly, then it will be completely messed up. So this was super annoying because you have to try and keep a super hard, even pressure cut around the entire edge of the dress. And of course I did mess it up a little bit, but I went back and cleaned it up the best I could. So yeah. So here is what the bottom skirt tier looks like all laid out before adding any stitching to it. Um, it still needs trimmed up. As you can see on the right side, the pink is longer, so I need to shorten it. Uh, this skirt was so much work. So I added some fray check to the entire outside of both layers of fabric and then glued them together with Fabri-Tac. So now I'm going to add a gathering stitch across this entire top here so that it is tighter. I also went ahead and cut out the other two patterns I have. This is a three tier skirt. The second tier is just a smaller version of the third tier, and then the top layer is a circle skirt. So I need to add a ruffle to both the top two layers that is also a double-sided fabric. Um, I hate this dress. It's so beautiful, but I hate it. So I have these ruffles here that I have to add a gathering stitch on the entire thing, and then I have to add them onto the top two dress. It's just, it's a mess. So here I have the third layer gathered and now I have the ruffle added to the second layer with a gathering stitch that I still have to pull. So I was really worried about this dress being too bulky because as you can see, the third skirt layer is already pretty wide. So I just added a snap buckle to the third layer and then I will be attaching the second layer to the third layer. <laughs> is, is this making any sense? And then the first layer is going to just be like a basic dress form. So yeah.
so here is how the bottom two layers look on the doll um it's coming along so for the top layer it is shorter in the front and longer in the back and a circle skirt that i'm going to have to add a gathering stitch around here and attach the bodice to for the top of the dress, I think I used a blouse pattern from Moonlight Jewel and then I used my rotary cutter to give it the rippled neckline. So now we're going to sew it onto the top layer of the skirt to make it a basic dress. Madoka is also wearing a jacket with two layers of sleeves that are supposed to be double-sided fabric because you can see the galaxy on the inside of the sleeves, but there was no way I was going to do that because the sleeves would be super thick and there's no way I was going to be able to turn that inside out, so sorry about that missing detail. So here is how her outfit is coming along so far. I still need to add a clasp for her jacket, which we'll get to later. I also gave her a pink satin choker necklace. So Madoka has these really pretty white bows in her pigtails and I attempted to make one, but it was way too bulky and I just wasn't liking how it was looking at all. So I decided to use these factory made bow accessories as her pigtail bows. So her jacket has a couple of pink gems on the front of it, so I'm going to be using my diamond dots. I love these things. So now I'm going to use some epoxy sculpt to make Madoka's gem, which is the center clasp for her jacket. While I'm waiting for that little bit of epoxy to dry, I break out my hair dryer and I'm gonna heat up the warblows and try to shape the wings a little bit. I'm not really changing that much though. I kind of like how they are right now, but uh, I just wanna make sure the warbla is set in place. After I waited for the war blood to cool down, I took some white acrylic paint and painted the entire wing. And I almost forgot that her shoes have tiny little wings on them, so I quickly sketched that out on some war blood as well and cut out two little wings. These wings were even more tedious than the other pair, trust me. To attach the wings to the tiny shoes, I just used some Gorilla Glue Super Glue.
so I think I've admired Madoka's long pigtails for long enough and now it's finally time to cut them short. I really kind of did not want to do this because I think her long hair looks so pretty, but um, she has really short pigtails so not much I can do. Coming back to her wings, now that the paint is dry, I took some pink chalk pastel and dusted that to the tips of her wings for a little bit of gradient. I think this looks super pretty and um, I'm obsessed. For Madoka's gem, I painted the epoxy completely white and then added the pink center of the gem and then the gold accent trim. I also wanted the gem to sparkle a little bit so I added some dragonfly glaze. Once the gem was completely dry I just super glued that bad boy right onto the jacket. Um, this doll is really meant as a display piece anyway, so I'm not too worried about the outfit not being completely removable. Here we have Madoka's bow and arrow, which was thankfully printed by my best friend, designer ECE on Instagram. Go check her out. This model was sculpted by Black Every Day on cgtrader.com, so if you want to buy this to print it yourself, I will leave the link in the description. So for Madoka's bow, I just painted it a light brown, painted the gems a hot pink, and painted the arrow a light pink. I also added a little bit of dragonfly glaze to these gems here. And so with those finishing touches, Madoka is all done. So this project was a lot more for me to take on personally, completely making the dress pattern by myself and completely hand sewing the dress and it's double-sided fabric. It was a lot to work with, but I am very proud with the outcome and I'm glad that I have tried to use some new materials. Warbla is kind of like my new favorite thing. Uh, I will probably be using it a lot more in the future. I will be trying to make a devil Hamura to go alongside Madoka so stay tuned for that. I don't know when I will be releasing the video for that because this doll took me about a month to complete and um, I'm not excited to get started on the other one, but in between these two dolls, I will probably put a poll up on my Instagram for what you guys would like to see next, so go check me out there for daily updates on what I'm working on, and if you like this video, make sure to hit like and maybe subscribe to see more custom doll content in the future. I also have my Etsy shop, which you can find in the link in the description. If you want to commission me for a doll, or if you're even interested in this one, just send me a message and I'll let you know. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, hopefully see you next time. Bye!